Today I'm replaying another wonderful interview from the archives. I first spoke to licensed acupuncturist Laurie Stone in 2021. She uses acupuncture to help women transition into menopause with more ease. I'm sure you will just love Laurie's simple explanations and gentle, calming way. Now on to the interview. Laurie, welcome to the show. Hi, Jen. Thanks for having me. I am very excited to be talking with you, and I've been looking forward to this for a while. And I'm very excited to be talking to you. I've been looking for an acupuncturist who is passionate about helping perimenopausal and menopausal women through the transition, so it is an absolute joy to have you here today. And um, I'm just interested, though, like I'm sure as a little girl you didn't dream of becoming an acupuncturist. (laughs) <laughs> Did you? No, I never even knew it existed at that so time. How did you find it? It it was it's one of those um, life experiences that the past just kind of led you that way. In college, I was already interested in different alternative health. Uh, therapies and modalities. I loved looking up if anyone got sick with something, I would look up what it was and see what other ideas that uh, they could use. And then it wasn't until I had my first job out of um, undergrad, out of college, and very stressed um, a corporate job in, in Chicago. And I was starting to have digestive symptoms. I went down the usual pathway of doctor after doctor after doctor, try this, try that, take this medicine, that didn't work, this didn't work, and getting frustrated, feeling like I wasn't heard, and they were just giving me one thing after another. And I just knew from what I was reading already that there would be something, there, there's some answer to this. And that was when a friend of mine had suggested, well, why don't you go to my acupuncturist? And so I went to her and it was just amazing. I felt so good walking out of there. And it's not that, you know, everything was magically fixed in one session and I didn't have to worry about anything else, but just that whole sense of well-being, that feeling of being heard. Uh, I felt like we had a path to go on, like things started making sense. And um, and it just kind of the rest is history from there. It took a while for me to get my life in place where I could go back to school and uh, study and, and learn how to do this. But the seed was planted in my early 20s. I haven't told you this, but it's the same for me. Um, Naturopathy is a second career for me. And it was in my early 20s that I went back to study because of personal experience. um, Isn't that funny? I think most practitioners of any kind get into their field of work because of a personal experience, something they've gone through that's led them to that modality. But then the mm-hmm. turnaround that they've had with that modality that they dedicate the rest of their life to to helping others. Yeah, it's it's hard not to share it. Yeah. You know, when you have that experience, when you you feel transformed, you feel empowered, it's hard to keep it to yourself and it's hard not to want to share that with other people. I absolutely agree. Your clinic has a, a a specific name, Three Wells Acupuncture Clinic. Does the Three Wells stand for anything? Yeah, I, I, I always enjoy when when um, somebody asks me this question because I'll have patients come in who ask that because most people will think of it. Your first thought will be mind, body, spirit. There's a three that you often see in natural healing, which is great because that's a powerful message to how we're all connected. You know, you can't separate out the mind and body, but it has nothing to do with that. It actually stands for eat, sleep, and poop. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. So there was this uh, concept uh, that I learned in school that no matter what is going on with somebody, No matter how complex the case is, if you, at the very least, help somebody digest their food better, eliminate their waste and toxins better, and sleep better, then amazing things will happen. And that's sort of been my guiding principle then ever since, because 
people come in and you will know this from, from what you do, people come in with very complex situations that are um, just feels like a whole jumble of symptoms and frustrations that they're going through and all of that. But no matter what else happens, we can always start there and start making a difference. So that's what I've just founded my entire clinic on. And I, I love I love that acupuncture being a traditional Chinese modality and naturopathy being more a Western modality. We both look at the gut or the digestive system first. Yeah, it all starts in the gut. You say absolutely. Oh, that's that's really nice to know that. I didn't realize that. Uh, <laughs> that would you call yourself a traditional Chinese therapist, or are you more an acupuncturist? I find it easier to just say acupuncturist or licensed acupuncturist. Um, technically, I am a. Um, uh, I've been trained in traditional Chinese medicine, so that would include acupuncture, Chinese herbal therapy, um, other techniques like gua sha and cupping, uh, tui na, which is a form of massage. Um, and uh, what am I missing out? Oh, qigong, meditative, uh, tai chi and qigong meditative exercises. So the whole program consists of all of that. But just in talking in general, it's so much easier just to say acupuncturist. <laughs> Good to know. But I love that it is that complete system. It is mm -hmm. the, the mind, body, spirit that you mentioned first without focusing on that. Yep. It still gets in there. It has to be in there because we're all connected. Yeah. So how does acupuncture work? This the acupuncture is, it's, that's a big complicated question because it works on so many levels and doing so many different things in the body. So what I, how I like to describe it is actually by giving an analogy. I find it so much easier to get, get my mind around it. So if you were to picture a vegetable garden, so you have your rows of vegetables, you have a row of broccoli, you have a row of carrots, a row of onions, a row of lettuce, that is like biomedicine or allopathic medicine. That's like going to the doctor or the hospital, et cetera. Each doctor has a specialty. Uh, you see your gastroenterologist and you see your cardiologist and your ob And uh, so you see each different modality. But acupuncture comes along and I look at it more like the irrigation system for the garden, the watering system for the garden. You're nourishing the whole body and trying to get every all the nutrients where it needs to go. And so a uh, picture then if you have a garden hose that has a kink in it. So the water is supposed to be flowing through, but you get a kink in it and not enough water comes at one end, too much water is being backed up on the other end and now you have symptoms. So acupuncture comes in, we put the needle where that kink in the hose is, unkink it and things start flowing again. And so in, uh, in more uh, physiological terms, that would be getting the main areas of communication working together again. So that would be your energy that we call chi in Chinese medicine, uh, speaks a little bit to the electrical system in the body, the communication of nerves, and then of course, Im improving blood flow to that area. So anytime you get good blood coming in, you're going to get the nutrients coming in and then any of the chunky stuff cleaned up and, and out of your system. That's a beautiful analogy. That, that really is a good way to, to picture what, what, acup what acupressure, acupuncture, sorry, <laughs> my wording's wrong. <laughs> All the above. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for listening to Menopause Natural So Solutions. how does this acupuncture then help menopause? Information about menopause? So with menopause, um, not you know, again, there, you, most people will be Opinions thinking of coming right, in and for a certain symptom, or uh, like wanting to come in for hot flashes or wanting to come in for if insomnia. If you enjoyed today's episode, and please share it. The way I look at it, it's more, um, I say I treat the woman who has those symptoms as opposed to treating those symptoms. So when I meet with somebody, we're going to be going over all the different symptoms that are coming up, but not just related to menopause. So it's not just going to be questions about hot flashes. It'll be questions about your, your sleep, your digestion. Uh, do you have any allergies? 
uh, do you tend to um, have mind racing thoughts, things like that. We're going to cover a whole array. And then from there, it starts to paint a picture of their overall pattern. So we work in terms of patterns instead of diagnosis words. And I don't know how that is for you in naturopathy. So for example, here, I wouldn't be diagnosing someone with, say, estrogen dominance. I would be looking at the underlying pattern and then doing points according to that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Because we are more than just our symptoms anyway. And Mm -hmm. quite often there's an underlying foundation of health, whether it be, like you said, toxin, too much toxins or not enough nutrition. And Mm -hmm. so I I agree. And there there is some similarities there with with naturopathy, definitely. Mm -hmm. I kind of uh, describe it as... Uh, so the single most common concern that people, the women will come in to share, they walk in the door and they're like, I am a hot mess. I am absolutely falling apart. And that will trickle into different symptoms. And for them, it, it's so frustrating because they feel like all these different areas are breaking down, but it's really not your one body. It's all connected. I think of it like a, um, a knotted ball of yarn. So when you're trying to unknot it and unravel it, it's frustrating. You're kind of pulling at the yarn and it's uncomfortable, but you keep working at it and you keep unraveling those strands and you figure out, just like you had said there, of um, it, is there a toxin overload? Is there... Um, a nutritional deficiency? What are all the different strands that we need to unravel? And so with that, there's just, there's always hope. It is never a hopeless case at all. And is that where pulses come in? You said that when you're you're finding the point and it could be this, it could be that. Is is that where pulse Mm -hmm. diagnosis comes in? Yep. (laughs) Yep. So that that will be in the the initial intake as we're talking through the symptoms. I mentioned the patterns. the, so I feel the pulses, you feel, uh, you could Google, um, look on the internet for a picture, um, cause it's hard to describe. I want to demonstrate with my hands, but we're, <laughs> um, talking over the podcast. Um, but you're feeling on both sides, both wrists, you feel the pulses, you have three fingers positioned. So you're feeling three different spots and I feel for, um, you know, is it really full or really thin? Is it really fast or really slow, Uh, very strong or very weak? And those will contribute to the pattern. So I may have five different women come in with the exact same symptom of hot flashes. And they will all receive five different treatments based on their symptoms, their um, pulses, and their tongue diagnosis. We haven't spoken about tongue. How, How do you diagnose with the tongue? Oh, that, that's a fun one. I have a chart in my waiting room with a mirror to have, so people can come in and try to diagnose themselves with that. Um, so with the tongue, you look at the color. Is it really, really dark red, really pale? Uh, look at the coating. If it's super thick, there might be some digestive issues going on. If it's uh, spotted, uh, where there's parts of it scraped off, we call it a geographic tongue. That would mean something uh, moist or dry, the shape of it. All those different uh, descriptions tie into their pattern. It's very interesting. We haven't covered whether acupuncture hurts, and I guess that's something that many people out there are <laughs> thinking, like, are you sticking needles into me? Am I enjoying this? Is it painful? Um, what do you tell people? <laughs> Yes, I get all sorts of reactions from people who are calling in to ask about that. That is the number one question. And the way I respond is that you feel something. It's not an ouch or a pinch. You're, you're aware of it. You're, uh, it might be like a little mosquito bite without the itch, just a very brief something. And then once it's in, it's actually comfortable. And it is supposed to be comfortable. So I always tell my patients, if you have an ouch or a pinch that lingers, then you have to let me know right away. It's not, don't grin and bear it and think, you know, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Let me know. I adjust it. And then um, 
once they're all in, I have you relax and rest for a little while. Uh, so um, we've started calling it acupuncture is the best nap in town because most people actually do rest or fall asleep. Hard to believe if you've never experienced it. Now, what about you? Have you tried acupuncture? I have tried acupuncture and I would agree with you. I would say 95% of the time, they're, they're, it, pain is not the right word. Uh, so, so maybe mm-hmm. sensation. I do sometimes feel like energy flow, like I feel like movement, but it's not an obvious movement. It's it's maybe on an energetic level um, mm-hmm. movement. And, but maybe like just 5% of the time there would be um, like a, a sharp instant, more like a little shock. And it's mm-hmm. instant and it's done and it's gone. And it's not there 95% of the time. And I just think, oh, that that must have been really needed. It must have been a <laughs> key point. And I'm glad it was done and it, it's over. On like a scale of 10 with 10 being the most painful, I would maybe even just put it at like a three or a three is possibly even too high. But it's it's not a pain yeah. pain. It's just a, something that's short-lived and that you just go, oh, it's like a twitch. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, a, that's a good description of when you feel it like that. And if it is something that stays uncomfortable, you just let your practitioner know and they'll, they'll adjust it for you. And same with the other sensations that you're feeling. It can be different for different people. Uh, it might be more, or sometimes I describe it as an awareness. You just know something is there. You could have a little, um, like a pleasant tingle, a little bit of uh, movement, uh, but like you had said, very subtle. And sometimes you feel it where the needle is. Sometimes it may be in a different part of your body. And there's no right or wrong to that as long as it's comfortable. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever your body is doing that day with the treatment. So I've had some treatments when I've had headaches and the movement is actually, Mm -hmm. I feel like the headache leaving. It's, or I guess for me, most of my acupuncture has been around um, energy and headaches. Like you said, you're not treating the symptom, you're treating the whole person. But if I've gone in and I'm just getting a, I guess, you, is it a constitutional? Like a tune-up, I call it. Treatment. <laughs> if mm-hmm. I do have any aches or pains, it doesn't always happen, but vast majority of the time, I do feel like, oh, that's that's left, that's gone, it's I like it. (laughs) Um, Yep, it's shifting. And that brings up a good point, too, about the. So, as I I will always take the person's pattern into account, and that would include uh, their constitutional tendency that you had just mentioned as well. Um, And then, but there will be some points that are directed towards whatever their chief concern is that day. And so we're always, they call, we call it a root and branch treatment. And so if you think of a tree, the root is the underlying pattern. The branch is the sy- symptom that you're manifesting at the moment. So if you come in and you have hot flashes and insomnia and knee pain, I'm always going to be including points that work with the overall, the underlying pattern and then tailor it a little bit more towards the knee pain, a little bit more towards the insomnia. And we can kind of specify that way. Um, So it's a a bit of bringing both into the mix so that you do feel some relief of your main concern and then improving overall for your body system. I've had great success with acupuncture, which is one of the reasons why I'm so excited to have you on the show today because for a Western woman, it's not necessarily the first thing you think of. And mm-hmm. it, it can be quite beneficial. So I'm very much about awareness and about opening up options because when a lot of women think menopause, they think hormone replacement. But there is so many more options than hormone replacement. And I think just having an awareness that you have other options and I'm not saying that you have to go down this way or that way. I I really believe that you need a team of practitioners to help you these days. And naturopathy and acupuncture do blend very nicely together. And that is something that I I can't 
on my healthcare team, I do have an acupuncturist. And it's just something that I think you should at least be aware of um, so that you can consider whether it's the right choice for you or not. That's definitely an option to explore uh, because I would say the majority, well, not so much anymore. In the beginning, the majority of people who were coming in for these uh, concerns around the perimenopausal time, it was, I have tried everything else. Okay, I'll try acupuncture now. But now in these recent years, it's becoming more well known. Somebody knows somebody who tried it, that um, I am having patients coming in more often who are in the middle of both. Like I'm exploring my biomedicine options with my doctor, but I know I want to look at some of the underlying issues and really get um, uh, some uh, handle on one of one of the benefits of acupuncture is helping to balance out that fight or flight system. So the fight or flight stress response versus rest and digest. And um, so they know they need help around their stress and, you know, want to add this in as a, just like you had said, like a, a team effort that they get around them. And what's nice with it is there is nothing about acupuncture that's going to interfere with the other things you're doing. So if you're exploring your options with your doctor, totally fine. If you are working with a naturopath, totally fine. What I do helps you, what you do with your clients and what you do helps what I do with my patients. And uh, they, they really go well together. It's a beautiful compliment. Um, mm. Yep. Yeah, better faster. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I know that apart from acupuncture, you also do acupressure. So what is Mm -hmm. the difference between the two? So a very easy difference between between the two of them is in the the word itself. So acupuncture, puncturing the skin with the needle, and acupressure is using pressing or massage techniques. So obviously the first one, please only, only, only ever go to a licensed practitioner to do that. Um, that is a procedure, so don't do that at home. Um, but acupressure, absolutely, you can do at home. I do it here at the clinic when I have somebody who is just so completely afraid of needles that they just kind of can't get a, around that that concept of needles. That I have some other options that we can use for acupressure, and then sometimes um, or. And then I will also uh, teach people how to do that at home. So, and that was one of the ways, one of the reasons that I created the Menopause Made Easy video program is it started as a way to give my patients what I called a treatment between the treatments. So you had something to use at home, very simple, easy routines that you could add into your day and do it yourself. And then what I found is that's a great way to start as well, because you can dive into that and be using acupressure at home on yourself. So it will use the exact same acupuncture points and for the same purposes that those points are used for, but you would either press with the thumb or your fingers, uh, massage tools, any kind of massage technique like that on the point itself. How easy is it? Very, very easy. Um, it, just a quick demonstration. Um, I've got uh, free videos up on my YouTube channel where I will teach people for a certain topic, for example. Um, uh, for I have a lot of patients who have jaw tension. I think it's probably my most popular video that's on YouTube. And so I show them the acupressure points for the jaw tension. And all you have to do is massage that for maybe 30 seconds, twice a day. And it's amazing the, the difference that that can do for all these different symptoms. How exciting, though, that you had this program for menopause symptoms. Mm-hmm. So it's good Menopause Made Simple, is it? And where do women find it? So and that is, if you go to my site, it's threewellsclinic.com. And I spelled the, the three, T-H-R-E-E. And threewellsclinic.com slash shop. 
and I've got the link right there and it'll describe more about it. But basically, I, I really am all about easy. So you see that word everywhere on my site and because we're so overwhelmed. There are so many things coming at us day in and day out. And the thought of doing a major overhaul overnight is, is just off-putting to so many people, um, just when you're juggling everything going on in your day-to-day. And so I made these videos. Um, there are three, one for sleep, one for temperature, and one for moods. And I give you a combination of routine to do with it, combining acupressure and essential oils for those who want to use essential oils. Now, for example, if if you don't use oils at all, don't care for that, you absolutely can do the entire program just with the acupressure as well. Um, but then you can follow along at home and just start adding that into your daily routine and it becomes a habit. And that's a lot of what we're going for. And I bet probably for you too in naturopathy is trying to shift the little things we do day in and day out to get those changes that add up to big differences. That's correct, because you can't eat one good meal and say, I'm done. Now I can (laughs) eat poorly. No, 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 you you need to constantly work on that. And I guess it's regardless of whether it's acupuncture or acupressure, it's not a one and done deal. So how many treatments do you generally need to start seeing a change? And that's exactly it. It's I explain to people it's a therapy, not a procedure. And so because when you're unfamiliar with it, you're not sure, you know, like you had said, is this a one and done, you know, as if you were going in for an injection or, or something else. And so, no, this is a therapy. So it's something that you're working on shifting the habits of the body. And so everybody, of course, is different, as you can imagine. I generally work in timeframes of about three months. So that might be eight to 12 visits, but I always start off with people about four visits because in that time you want to learn how acupuncture works for you. You want to start seeing some changes, seeing some shifting. And then from there, we decide where to go with it. So some women might continue on for a regular series. Some women are feeling pretty good and want to back off a little bit and see how things hold. And then others will uh, start doing more of a a maintenance tune-up kind of treatment uh, where they come in maybe monthly or quarterly. So it it really varies from that point, but I encourage people really give it a good go up front and see how that can shift for you. Now, as you can imagine, I I expect you uh, see this too with your clients, what you put into it will determine also if it goes faster or not. And so I ask my patients to meet me halfway and do some of their homework and do some of those little changes that they can put in pretty easily day in and day out. And because otherwise I call it the two steps forward, one step back dance. If you know you have triggers and, and I understand it can take a little bit to change them and shift them. But if you know you have triggers that will block some of the progress or slow down, I should say, slow down some of the progress. Um, It's not a complete block. We can always work through things, um, but it is a a working together kind of a treatment. And I agree. And I would say that it's actually better if the patient can do more at home because if if you're – it's personal empowerment. You want to take action. You want to be in control. You're, okay, I'm working on my health. Health isn't given to you on a silver platter. You actually need to work for it. And it's great to actually go and see a licensed practitioner to make sure that you're on the right path and that you get your your, um, your tweaks and that you move faster. But if you're not doing the work at home, if you're not making the changes, then it's not empowering and it's slowing you down. It's not like you can't get there without doing it, but it's, it's not ideal either. So I think mm-hmm. I, th- I love that you do the treatments, but you also give them some homework. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, it 
it creates a two things, kind of a dependency on your practitioner. And and it's not it, it coming in for regular treatment is a is a great thing. Like I I see my practitioners on a on a regular basis. Um but being solely dependent on that, you have no other way to feel good unless you do that one thing. Um it, just like you said, it's it's not as empowering. Um it doesn't um it doesn't move you forward as quickly as you would want it to. Um, so I, I totally support that. And I, I always, I call them graduation days. I'm like, okay, we can start, you know, stretching out your treatments and, you know, you've got this, you're, you've made a lot of changes. You're feeling the progress. That's, that's the main, one of the main goals of having those treatments close together up front is to feel that progress so that then that feeds its own motivation to keep working on the changes that you're doing. Because as you know, in the beginning, sometimes it's a leap of faith of, well, if I cut out this food, is that really going to help me or not? And you have to go through that little transition of faith before you feel the benefits to then know, yes, this is a good change and I can keep this going forward. I agree. Look, this has been such a wonderful conversation. Thank you for your time. Now, you've mentioned your website. Is there any other way that we can contact you? Like, do you have any social media presence? I do. And actually, if um, if you don't mind, I have a free gift for your audience oh, that I wanted course. to share. <laughs> um, so if you go to my site, go to threewellsclinic.com slash menopause. I have a free download there for you, and it's um, three easy things. There's that easy again. Three easy things to do right now to ease your menopause. Uh, again, it's uh, I love the quick things you can do in the moment to start shifting things. So I put that together for your audience, and you can go to that site, threewellsclinic.com slash menopause and get your free gift. And on there, on my site, I have all the links to my social media. So my Facebook page, Instagram, and my YouTube channel. So you'd be able to get that there too. Fantastic. So thank you for the gift. Um, I thank you on behalf of everybody, really. <laughs> and I will also put those links in the show notes. So if you didn't oh, want to catch it, then you can just go to the show notes and click on the links and we'll, we'll direct you to there. Laurie, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you, Jen. So much fun talking about um, all forms of healing. And we could probably talk for hours. We could do. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, I hope you've enjoyed today's chat and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend.